When I was told I had cancer, I was like, okay, now, the first thing that hit me, I knew cancer is a very expensive treatment. I saw the world actually going round. Here I am, I've been diagnosed with breast cancer. At the same time, they have given me a letter of termination. I felt bitter that I was going to die and I was going to leave my children when they were still young. I didn't sleep, I, I was really in panic. This is the story of three brave women who were diagnosed with breast cancer and have fought hard to live and tell their story. They have been stigmatized, rejected, and suffered personal loss through their battle with cancer. I was an accountant by profession. Just three months before I was diagnosed in October 2009, I had lost both my parents. My dad had been at Kenyatta National Hospital suffering from uh, prostate cancer. But the doctor had not told us, but we used to go and see him. He was in pain. He had been tied his legs and hands on the bed. But the fact that the doctor didn't tell us in advance, it left me with bitterness. I thought, let me Google and see what is this cancer that kills. Little did I know I was preparing for myself. I used to work with an insurance company and also run a few things like tenders. I was into tender business. Cancer treatment is not really a joke, so I had to pause it a bit for me to complete my treatment. And also, I couldn't run two things at a go. And also, I didn't have money to continue the business. It was the year 2012 when my husband told me that he felt a lump. I'm the second person in our clan. To, to, to suffer from breast cancer. I have an uncle who, who had breast cancer and he didn't know it was breast cancer because he was a man. When I told my friends and my family, some of my friends came close, some of course ran away. One of my brother ran away. In fact, he had to spread rumors that I was dying. So they were even planning on how to come and take me from here and take me back home so that I can reduce the expenses of the burial. Uh, there are some people who, nicknamed, who, who nicknamed me and they used to call me bonus, meaning that I was living on a bonus life. I just had bonus days to go. So anytime I passed them, they could call me bonus and laugh. That made me feel so much demoralized, so much down. I was so much discouraged. I didn't break the news to my husband alone. So when he came, the doctor explained. I mean, what had happened, he had. He just said, you'll be fine. Then he went. He never came back until today. I got an infection which made my breast to swell and there was a lot of pus. It became like a very heavy stone. So every day I used to go for them to remove. But even after almost a month, the, uh, the breast was still very big. So I managed to go to Pakistan. I stayed there. They did the surgery once again. They said I have to stay there until the wound heals. So I stayed over here. The community at first thought that I was contagious. Because I remember even as they were fetching water, a few women could handle my jerry can to fetch for me water. Others couldn't. They couldn't even come close to me, especially the time when I was going through the chemotherapy. My husband was my best friend at that time. He stood with, he stood with me, especially when I went for my therapy. He could come, nurse me, do everything for me. There's one prayer I told God that, God, may you give me life so that they can know that even cancer is, is treatable. Give me life so that these people can know that cancer is not the end of everything. That has been the mantra for Jennifer, Mary, and Selassa, that the public may be educated about cancer and demystify all the existing myths and misconceptions. Through the Mark More Than a Patient campaign, these strong women have now been empowered to rebuild their lives and have been given renewed hope, financial independence, and are also giving back to the community around them. After the treatment, I knew that at least God has taken me through 
So I'm going back, uh, I'll, I'll be able to go back to my place of work. I think I had even called my boss. I told him that I'll be, I'll be reporting to work in the month of July. But uh, July is when my hubby passed on. I thank God for the organization called MAC. They came at the right time because uh, once you're through with this treatment, it drains you a lot. And it, if you can get some, someone that will take you back to your feet, you'll be grateful. I'm able to, to get a few coins to, to help us. At least I'm able to put something on the table. When Mark came up and asked, what can you do? I thought the first thing I would do it so easily is just tailoring. And then they came up with this uh, machine. And now I was able to start, I mean, uh, at least sewing some cloth. It has helped me so much because whatever I get here, at least I save a little. So that by the time the schools, when they open, I'm able at least to meet other costs related to the school. After I came back, I realized I had a passion for cancer patients because of what I went through. And then I thought I can do something about my community. I start from where people know me. One of the things we are lacking in Kenya is knowledge. People don't know. Kansa, when diagnosed early, it is not a death sentence. You can be treated and you'll be fine the way I am. Kansa is not witchcraft. And the moment your mind is set witchcraft, even if you are treated, you can't heal because your mind is already set I've been bewitched. The empowerment has made me feel independent. We are now able to take children back to school. At least I've learned more, I've grown strong, I've been strong. I've been also an encouragement to other people. When they see me, they see a woman who can fight. When they see me, they see somebody bold. When they see me, they see somebody who has a brighter future ahead.